Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. This is Fausto from Cybertrain University. How's everybody doing? Sing it, Steve. Sing it. Yeah, JB. Don't you like the old 80s? Throwback. Big hair. President Reagan. <laughs> I gotta love the 80s. Good to see you, Louie, Jason, Mark. Good to see you. Welcome, everyone. Well, welcome to Closing Bell, ladies and gentlemen. And today, um, I know we had off the past two weeks uh, due to the big holiday Christmas and, you know, and uh, hopefully everyone had a great 2015 and the New Year's Eve. But we're back better than ever, and uh, I wanted to come out with a big splash with Hubert Centers. Hubert's a very, very good, good good friend of mine. Um, he's going to be talking about an hour, but I wanted to kind of tell you a little bit about him. Uh, first of all, um, I give the most respect for Hubert Centers because, you know, we don't, you know, we're very, very selective of who we have come on Closing Bell because we try to get you the best educators. And, and I know Hubert Centers for almost, it's got to be at least 10 years, uh, if not longer. He's a pro trader. He's been, he lives down in Kentucky, which, you know, everyone down in Kentucky is a great, you know, great people in, in, down in Kentucky. Um have a lot of friends down in Kentucky, and I'm not talking about just the horse business, but a lot of great traders down there. But he has a passion to helping people over the years. I've noticed that. I've seen him, you know, a lot at the at the events that we do, a lot of traders expos. We do a lot of a lot of events personally together. We actually have a big one that's coming up here in New York. We're doing a um, uh, we're going to be doing a big on-site event with Hubert. So looking forward to that. But he's one of the best, um, one of my favorite and best um, educators in the industry. In, uh, in the topics that he covers regarding about the futures and options. Not too many people out there really, you know, know with the skill set. You know, one thing I'd be very careful is that there, there are uh, presenters and there are traders, okay? And when you have a presenter, just because they have a great PowerPoint doesn't make them a great trader. And, um, but, but Huber is a great trader. I trade side by side with him a few times. I see some of his trades. We always kick back uh, and share some ideas together. So uh, definitely take the opportunity to uh, listen very, very carefully, and then hopefully ha could get involved in a little bit with him and understand what he does. Because listen, the worst thing that anyone could do is not learn how to trade. The easiest, the most inexpensive thing you could do is just learn something because it just makes you a better trader. Remember one thing, ladies and gentlemen: great traders never stop learning. So without with that uh, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, we pass the mic over to Hubert. Hubert. Stage is all yours, buddy, and Happy New Year. Thank you, Fausto. Thank you very much. All right, so let me check my mic because uh, some folks that have been using Omnovia have been having some issues with it. Sometimes I have issues with Omnovia. I just want to make sure I'm doing it right. Um, can you hear me? If you can hear me, give me yes in the chat box. It probably sounds like a thick con country redneck accent. That's the way it's supposed to sound. All right, so, <laughs> all right, so we're good. Now, do you see a slide that has a big blue welcome and a big blue eye over here? Just type in blue if you see that. Now, last bit of thing. I'm dyslexic. I can't spell worth a lick. My kids think it's hilarious. When they were growing up, my, my daughters would always go, Mommy, Mommy, why, why are boys so stupid? And she'd go, what do you mean? Well, Daddy's always asking you how to spell things. And they're like, well, Daddy's dyslexic. He can't spell. Not all boys are like that. So I use a thing. It's a little drawing board to uh, see, uh, to show you things. So if you don't mind, give me the answer to this question. And that'll let me know that my little drawy thing is working because I draw on the slides a lot to kind of get my point across. All right, cool. So it looks like it's working. All right, perfect. So let's get started. First, I have to uh, let you read this warning disclaimer. Warning, danger, danger, Will Robinson. You're probably going to lose all of your money trying to learn how to trade. Most of us will burn through one, two, or three accounts before we figure out how to do this thing. All right, now I am registered, so I have to make sure I'm super, super careful on what I tell you. It's very important that you read this right here, CFTC Rule 4.41. Read this while I'm talking to you. If I read it, I'll mispronounce something, so I'm just going to give you my gist on this. You should never trade more money than you can afford to lose. You only trade discretionary income, okay? Only. You don't trade your mortgage money or your lunch money or your car money, right? Now, the reason I'm registered, I'm a registered representative. I'm a registered three and 30. Those are the two licenses I have. It's not so much that I wanted to own a futures brokerage firm, um, but I do own one. And the reason I own it is I'm a independent IB, which means I can clear my own trades and other people's trades. I just, I just uh, prefer to clear my own trades because I can set my commission rate. 
So when I went to a broker, they'd say, hey, all right, so if it's retail, you know, you get $5 a round turn, right, on a, on a, a round turn for a futures commission. Well, if you own the brokerage firm, you get a set more than half of that. And then I also have seats on the exchange. Uh, IDMs, I have IDEMs, which it decreases my commission by another half. So I don't pay a whole lot of money when I press the trigger or the mouse clicker. So if you're in a trade and you do a round turn, it's five dollars for me. I pay way less than that. So that's I, I pay professional fees. Now it's a double-edged sword. I also have to pay higher fees for my data feeds. So you don't have to pay as much for the data feed as I do. I have to pay more, but I don't have to pay so much on the round turn. So when you go through a drawdown and heads up, we all go through drawdowns. I've never met a professional trader that has not went through a drawdown. Every single one of them that I know, even my heroes and the guys that I look up to, all of us unicorns that make money in the markets, we all have drawdowns. Anybody that tells you they don't have a drawdown is as full of shit as a Christmas turkey and lying to you. Everybody understand? All right. So um, your trading career will probably end up being like a bad country song in reverse. Your wife's going to leave you, probably for your best friend. Your kids are going to grow up hating you. Your dog will die because there's no cats in country songs. They're going to repossess your Ford or Chevy pickup truck. And they're probably going to foreclose on your single wide or double wide trailer. If you understand the disclaimer that I have just read to you, please say yes in the chat box. So if the CFTC or the NFA audit this, they can say, well, he tried to scare him to death. He did his job. All right, cool. Now, it is risky. Even if you know what you're doing, you can lose a lot of money, so be careful. So as Fausto said, my name is Hubert Sinners, spelled S-E-N-T-E-R-S. -E -E I think my great-grandpa decided he just wanted to stop spelling it with a, a C and started with an S, which is a nightmare for all of us that have that name. I am known in the industry as the no BS approach to trading and investing. I kind of call them how I see them. Sometimes that gets me in trouble with the exchange and other brokerage firms. I don't really care, though, because life is short. Nobody gets out alive. You ought to be able to voice your opinion, and i got to be able to sleep at night. So what I'm going to share with you tonight, or today, we're doing the webinar today, is one of my ways to find decent trades or good trades or better trades. But before I do that, I'm going to give you a little background on me. I grew up in the coal mines of eastern Kentucky. I did not grow up super poor. I did not grow up um, uh, super rich. I grew up in a middle-income family in eastern Kentucky. Now, if middle income in eastern Kentucky is not great. So when I was growing up, I had about mm, four or five things I could have done when I was a kid growing up. I could have, number one, I could have been a, a teacher, right? Which I didn't like the the aspects of that. And now here I am trying to teach how to trade, which is kind of funny. Uh, you could be um, a coal miner, which means you're going to die of uh, black lung. Plus, I don't like dark, cold, confined places. That's not my gig. You could be a meth dealer, you could do that. Or you could, number four, you could grow weed, you could do that. Or you could run some moonshine. So you can see the predicament that I was in. All these three, the risk to reward ratios, would have probably ended me up in the federal penitentiary with a, a, a cellmate named Bubba in an orange jumpsuit. Not my gig, didn't want to do it. So I got out of Eastern Kentucky and I, and I went on a quest. I was like, I'm going to study some really successful driven, wealthy individuals. I'm going to figure out what they're going to do, what they're doing. I'm going to figure out how they're doing and ask them for advice and copy what they're doing. So I am fortunate enough to made to have made multiple millions of dollars over my career. And I figured out a thing or two. You'd ha I'd have to be kind of kind of slow to not figure out a thing or two over the years. I've been trading for 20 plus years. I've been in the education game probably for 15 um, got in the education game as an accident. The exchanges asked me and one of my partners to teach people how to do what we were doing for a living. Now, one of the myths I'm going to bust is a lot of people will start here at the S and then they'll try to get here to the pile of cash, right? That is the American dream to make a pile of cash, right? Heads up, the money won't make you happy. It never does. The people and the relationships are the most important things. I've never seen anybody go from point A to point B unless they invest eight to 10 years and then they're labeled an overnight success. I've also never seen it happen like this in a stair-step fashion where they're like, well, I'm just going to get, you know, just a little better every year and eventually I will get to the million dollars. I, I'm, I've never seen that happen. What I see is either you get out right out of the gate, you have a little bit of luck, or you fail miserably 
and then you try to figure out how to get where you're trying to go, and it ends up looking like a real weird spaghetti bowl of success and failure and failure and failure and some more success to where you eventually get here. So if you think it's a, a get-rich-quick scheme, it is not. It, there is no shortcut to long-term success. There are things that you can do to increase your odds, in my opinion, though. All right. Now, this is a mastermind group that I'm in. This uh, and uh, the mastermind groups that I am, you usually have to pay about twenty-five thousand dollars a year, and you have to be doing at least a million dollars in net revenues or more. There's a couple billionaires that come in, and I always like asking the questions like, "Why do you? Why do you keep doing it?" And oddly enough, it's usually just you're hungry for it, and you don't want to go back to where you came from. So. Those are some of the things that I've learned. I've also learned some other things I'm going to share with you today. So this is a picture of me and Paula Abdul. She's actually about six inches shorter than that because she's got six-inch heels on. This is Sir Richard Branson. Him and I both suffer from dyslexia. He thought that was funny when I asked him about that. Uh, I help him with his Virgin Unite charity, and he's a, he's a neat guy. This is Mr. Wonderful here on the hit show The Shark Tank. He will try to gut your business with a license deal. And then this is Dave Ramsey, and that was at one of his Christmas functions there. You can see the Christmas tree in the background. This is me. I am the, uh, the guy with a thick Kentucky accent with a square head there. I think in this, this photo shoot, I was just doing it for like Futures Magazine or something. I am in front of these 24-inch LCDs and in front of this microphone. I'm not standing at my desk, although I could at a press of a button. I'm actually sitting down. I don't have that garb on. I got a a, a Under Armour t-shirt, a pair of jeans, and a pair of tennis shoes, and a hat on right now. Now, when I was growing up, I always said, you know, if I ever make it, quote unquote, make it with air quotes in there, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I watched a lot of Ghost of Mr. Chicken, Scooby-Doo, and Batman. And I was like, man, if I ever make it, I'm going to build that big house, and I'm going to pay for it as much as I can in cash, and I'm going to have these secret bookcase doors like they have. I was like, those things are just cool. So the commute for me is about two minutes from upstairs to the downstairs. And then if you open my door to my office, what you do is you, you pull on this book and you click that button and it opens up into a 1500 square foot office that me and my team work in every day. And, that, and they take care of uh, several different things we do here. So number one, we make money doing trading and investing. We also have other businesses that we own or run. And then we also have real estate investments. So those are the three main ways that I generate income or wealth for my businesses, myself, or my family. I don't just do it in trading and investing. I think that's crazy. I think it's really important that you be diversified. So that's a little bit of my background. So congratulations. You're in the right place at the right time, and here's why. So this webinar will take about 45 minutes, and then we'll be done. I, I'm not a huge fan of making the webinar super, super long but I do need to let you know where I'm coming from. I'm going to show you how I think is a great way for you to take your trading to the next level. Now, it will require that you use uh, candlesticks. Does everybody in here at least use candlesticks? Because it doesn't work as well with bar charts. It works better with candlesticks. So, all right, so if you're a candlestick fan, you should be just fine. Now, you don't need to know the pattern, so you just need to know basically high, low, open, close. All right? So the first thing you're going to ask me, what does this work on? Well, this works on stocks, options, futures, forex, bonds, gold, and commodities. All right? Now, the next thing we're going to look at is this is going to be a little bit different. All right? I am not your normal uh, PowerPoint junkie. What I do for a living, I usually trade live in front of people, all right? which was a novel concept back when uh, we originally started it. I didn't know you weren't supposed to trade live. And when we went to trade shows, me and my partner would stand up on stage and trade live, and everybody would be like, whoa, how would you do that? So I'm going to have fun. I'm going to cut up. We're going to have. We're gonna, uh, mess around and have fun. Life is too short uh, to not have fun. I don't think anybody's gotten out alive that I know of yet. So um, I do take what I do for a living very serious. I just don't take myself very serious. So with that said, let's get started. Here are the backtesting results of this strategy slash tactic, okay? On the S&P 500 over the last five years, the stocks in the index, it worked. It only worked on 430 out of 500. So it had about an 86% success ratio, okay? That's in the stocks in the S&P 500. Now, for me, I trade just about everything and anything and everything out there. 
stocks, options, futures, forex, bonds, crude, gold. If it moves, I trade it. If there was a market in, you know, tic tacs or toothpicks, and I thought I could make some money on it, I would do it. So if you took every signal, if you took the every long and every short and every short and every long and every long and every short, your return would have been 33%. There's a way to increase that to from 33% to 79%. If you remove the counter trend signals and if you use a three bar, that says day, but it should be bar, three bar confirmation. So here's all that means. If you've got a uptrend like this, and if this was the long, and that was the short, and that's the long, short, long, short, long, short, long. I'm going to recommend that you ignore the shorts and only go on the long signals until that trend line is broken. Okay, and that's going to increase. That's going to increase um, your potential to go from 33 to 79 percent. That's a good Jim. I do that all the time. I love watching videos at two times speed. It makes a ton more easy to uh, definitely play back video content. If any of you guys have never done that, it's a, a great way to speed up things. So it works really good on the S&P 500. It's been profitable on 29 currencies over the last 10 years. Okay, 29 currencies over the last 10 years. That's a pretty good track record. And that's if you use the, uh, the formula of daily, 60 minute, and a 10 minute as a filter. All right. So time frame selection, this is the most important slide in the presentation. So pay attention here. So my favorite ones are daily, hourly, and 10 minute. Now here's why. On the daily chart, I know I've got about 20 to 30 days that the cloud is going to extend to the right. And I know I'm going to be in the trade for maybe weeks of a time. Okay. If I'm looking at an hourly, I'm going to be in this trade for days. At a minimum, I'm going to be in it for three days. Could be more. If I'm looking at a 10-minute chart, I know I'm going to be in it for hours, a minimum of four hours. So I'm looking at I'm looking at a four-hour trade, I'm looking at days, and then I'm looking at uh, weeks. So daily, hourly, and 10 minutes. So if I get a signal on the 10-minute chart frame, time frame, I know that that signal is probably going to be good for a minimum of four hours. If I'm looking at an hourly, a 60-minute time frame, I know this thing's going to be good for a minimum of three days. If I'm looking at a daily signal, I know this thing's going to be good for at least 20 to 30 days. Very, very important. All right. So this is what you want. It's the number one technique used in Japan. It has been uh, a number one best-selling book eight years in a row on technical analysis. You're going to know exactly what's happening in seconds. Uh, uh, trends and signals is what it's going to give you. It's designed to produce clear signals. And let's get into this. All right. This is the edge for you now. So most indicators are laggy, and you'd probably agree with that. So most indicators will tell you what happened in the past and what's happening right now, but not very many of them actually tell you what's going to happen in the future. And this is one of the rare cases where this indicator will tell you what's going to happen in the past, the present, and it'll give you a future projection in what's going to happen. Now, I am not here to sell you this indicator. This indicator should be on all main platforms. What I will do at the end of this webinar, I'll give you the opportunity to purchase and invest in a course on how to learn more about this. But this webinar, I will give you enough information to get you up and running. And if you want to learn more, you can invest in that education. If not, it's not a big deal. There's no pressure at all. Okay, But I'm not here to sell you an indicator. This indicator is freely available to everyone out there. All right, so let's go through what this looks like. So do you see a black chart with a blue, looks like a string going through it, okay, and, and, and some candlestick formations? Do you see that on your screen? Give me yeses when you see that. All right, so this is, oh, hold on. There we go. All right, yeses. All right, this is what we call Ichimoku cloud charting, okay, Ichimoku. So if we look at this, I'm going to teach you all the components. So number one, there's a few concepts that you have to know about. If the price action is above the cloud, that means it's bullish in nature. Hold on, I got technical support tab here. Okay, there you go. All right. So if it's above this blue thing, this is called the cloud. Grab my pencil here. C-L-O-U-D. That's the cloud. If the price action is below the cloud, this is considered bearish, or it should continue lower. 
If it's above, it's considered bullish and should consider it going higher. All right. Uh, large screen, too large for iPhone screen. Get on a PC. Um, all right. So here you can see here's support. It bounced off, right? Here's support. It bounced off. Here it went through support, and then here it went through support. It ultimately bounced back, and then it came up here. Here it worked pretty good. Here it worked pretty good. Here it worked pretty good, and then there it worked pretty good. All right? Does that make sense so far? This is going to be support. Now, this is where it's trading at right now. If it sells off, it's going to sell off to the cloud, and it should bounce off either the top of the cloud or the bottom of the cloud. So now let's go through what all these things are. This is the cloud, C-L-O-U-D. So type in cloud into the chat box so I can make sure that we've got the audience participation. So this is the cloud. This is going to be your real-time support and resistance. If this thing was to sell off, it should bounce either off the top of the cloud or the bottom of the cloud. Now, you see this little yellow line? This yellow line is called the turning line, T-U-R-N-I-N-G, turning line. Now, um, if you've ever tried to translate a, a Japanese book into English, it's kind of a pain in the pain in the neck and can get expensive with translators. So um, th we're talking cloud. Now type in turning line, turning line. And this is a nine period midpoint average. It's not a nine point moving average. I'll show you that in just a second. All right. So we've got the cloud and now we have the turning line. All right. Now, the third line here, here we go. We've got cloud, C-L-O-U-D. Here we have the turning line. I'm just going to abbreviate with turn. And then here we have the standard line, the STD line. I know it's not something you got back in high school or college. I don't know. Maybe you did. I don't know. I don't know your lifestyle. All right. So here we've got the support and resistance. Now, notice how we're going to use this, okay? If it breaks the yellow, where does it go to next? Maybe the purple. If it breaks the purple, where does it go? Top of the blue or bottom of the blue. So you've got different areas of interest. So you've got one, the yellow, two, the purple, three, the top of the blue, four, bottom of the blue. Okay? So those are the components. So think about this as three, actually four levels of support. If it breaks this yellow, that's fine. We're going to come down here. We're going to buy it at the purple. If it breaks the purple, we're going to go to either top of the blue or bottom of the blue. Now this is telling us all this ahead of time. Like, Hey, this thing is in bullish mode. Every time it sells off, one of these lines hold it. So you just have to figure out which line you're going to do. No software needed. It's on indicators on almost everything out there. So here we go. Here's the last one. Cloud. C-L-O-U-D. Cloud. This is the turning line. This is the STD line, the standard line. And this is the lagging line. All right. So here's what this is. This is the, what the price action did in the past. So this is the past, P-A-S-T. This is the present. I'm going to label that as now because I can't spell present because I'm dyslexic. And then this is the future, F-U-T-U-R-E, future. Does that make sense? So we got past, present, and future. And now we've got an idea of how we can actually crack this nut or skin this cat. So let's go through how all this is calculated so you'll know when you look at your system how to use it, okay? So the turning line is a midpoint calculation where you're going to take the high and the low of the last nine days. You're going to divide those by two. So in this case scenario now, I'm using all old PowerPoints. At the end of this, I'm going to do nothing but live chart after live chart after live chart after live chart. It's an easier way to do it. That way I don't have to change PowerPoint every time I do a webinar. This stuff works. I'll show you everything live here in just a second. All right, so if we take a look here, you can see this is an old Apple chart. Apple has a nice little bullish up move, and then it breaks below the cloud here, right? And now it's going to be bearish in nature, so now it's a nice little sell-off. Now, the turning line is this red line. It's always the line that's closest to the candlestick. So this is the turning line right here, T-U-R-N, all right? So let's go see how it's calculated. So this would be today. And then you'd count back nine days, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You find the low, you find the high, you figure out what that is. This is the high, 465.75. This is the low, 434.39. You add these two creatures together, and then you divide them by two, and it should magically come out to be 450.07. No, I'm not a math genius. The answer is right down here.
and the number will be calculated, okay? The number will be calculated right over here on the side with the tab to the right. It'll give you that marker, 450.07. Now, remember what we said earlier about where the cloud is and where the candlesticks are. So notice that the candlesticks are below the cloud. Do you see that? And we've ran into overhead resistance right here again. If we break this red line, where's the next place we're probably going to go to? If we break this red line, where's the next place we're going to go to? Yeah, we're probably going to go to the underside of the cloud. If the underside of the cloud gets broken, where's the next place we're going to go to? Yep. Down here, the green line. So if we break the bottom of the cloud, if we go through the red and break the bottom of the cloud, the next place we'll go to would be 425.42, which is the, the standard line. All right. So let's go figure out how the standard line is calculated. Midline of the high and the low of the last 26 sessions. You're going to take the high and the low of the last 26 bars, then divide that by two. That number will be the midpoint. So here's how that works. So the standard line is the, that, this is the turning line, T-U-R-N. The standard line is the next line closest to the candlestick action, the current price action. So in this case, it's the green line, okay? How you calculate this one is you take today, you count back 26 bars, you find the low area, you find the high area, you figure out what those are, you add them together, you divide it by two, and you come up with 425. It will show you a marker right there. So it's telling you like this green line, mathematical number is 425.42. Does that make sense so far? Does everybody follow me? So we've got the cloud. We've got this thing is a massive sell-off because the price action was below the cloud and ran into it, right? And the cloud acted as good resistance. If it breaks this red line, where's it going to go to? And it'll probably break it because the price action came from below the cloud into the cloud. If it breaks this red line, where's it going to go to? Bottom of the cloud. If it breaks the bottom of the cloud, where's it going to go to? Green line right there. And if it breaks that green line... It's going to go back down here to these lows in this example. Now, you're probably asking, but, well, yeah, but can you do counter trend trades on it? You can. I don't do a lot of counter trend trades on it. I do some. I'm about 80-20 or 70-30. I'm more of a trend trader than I am a, a, a counter trend trader. If you wanted to, you could do that. Like, if you got a close above the red, well, it's probably going to the green. If, you're going to, if you get a close above the green, well, it's probably going to the bottom of the cloud. If it goes to the bottom of the cloud... And if it doesn't turn back, well, it's probably going to the top of the cloud. Now, if we have one, two, or three closes above the cloud, that's a reversal and we'll get long. Okay? Yeah, probably. I always say probably. There's no such thing as definitely. Uh, trading, they call it trading. They don't call it guaranteed wealth generation with no risk. It's called trading for a, re a reason. The same reason they don't call fishing catching and they don't call hunting killing because the odds are against you. All right. The cloud, cloud span A, midpoint of a turning line and a standard line, shifted 26 bars forward. So now we're going to talk about the clouds. So here's how the cloud is calculated. So there's a top and the bottom. So this is the turning line. This is the standard line. We're going to take the midpoint between those two creatures and put it in the future, 26 bars. That's going to give us either the high of the span or the low of the span. All right. Cloud span B is a midpoint of the high and the low of the last 52 sessions shifted. So in this case, we're going to say, here's where we're going to draw from here. We're going to go back 52 sessions. We're going to take uh, the midpoint. We're going to shift it in the future, 26 bars. So you're going to get the high and the low of, of the, uh, the cloud there. All right. Now, lagging line. The lagging line is the price line. And it's the close shifted back 26 bars. This is the laggy part of it. So in this case scenario, you're going to say this is the price action. And we're going to shift it back. So it looks just like this when we zoom in. Here's the price action. We're going to shift it back in the past 26 bars. All right? Mm-hmm. Everybody following me so far? We're doing good so far. We're rocking and rolling here. All right. Now, here's how you spell the indicator. I-C-H-I-M-O-K-U, Ichimoku, 
Ichimoku cloud charting signals. Just look up Ichimoku and you can find out more information about it. The lagging line, these are the signals that I like. The lagging line crossing the cloud is the strongest. It's also the slowest signal. So it's ranked number one in my system. The Goldilocks signal is when the price crosses the cloud. It's faster, and I like it a little bit better, but it's not as strong as the lagging line. So what we're looking for is we're looking for a price to cross the cloud by either one, two, or three bars, depending on your time frame. Price and the lagging line touching the cloud are usually good counter trend signals. And then when the cloud spans crosses, when they change color to either uh, blue or red or red to green, depending on your platform, that's a good indication that you're about to change. And the turning lines crossing the standard line, this is the weakest signal. It's the most inconsistent. You need to make sure that you're following the overall trend. Because if you don't, this thing will chop you up a little bit. So be careful with that, and I'll show you what I mean in just a second. All right, so let's go through uh, some of the signals that I like and that you're going to scan for, okay? All right, so the lagging line. You see the blue line crossing here, right? Now remember, that lagging line is 26 bars delayed. So if, when this lagging line was here, the price action was probably right here in that area right there which means you're going to give a, give a lot of a meat on the table. Now, heads up, the way I trade, I don't trade that I would short here and cover here. That's impossible. That's fantasy land. That doesn't happen. I've been trading for 22 plus years. I've done that maybe six times in my life, and it was not the dead high and the dead low. It was, you know, three or four ticks above the high or low, you know, it's, it's, it, but it's not that common. So the way, way I trade is I'll get in like here, and then I'll get out like either here or here. So I'll get the meat in the middle. I will, I will never get the dead high and the dead low. So in the lagging line here, it's, it's a little too laggy for my taste. So I don't do it all the time. The trade that I like is when the price action crosses one, two, or three bars below the cloud. Now, you see here, this is one, two. This one's back into the cloud. So that wouldn't have been a short signal. And that saves me some pain sometimes. So you can see massive uptrend, nice little sell-off, three bars below the cloud, Boom, I'm ready to rock and roll. Now, if I can also get the lagging line to follow, that's a plus. But I don't have to have it, but it is a plus. So I would short here, and I would try to stay short until I get one, two, or three bars back above the cloud. All right. So this is better than a standard five, nine. I like it. Chris, you know, better is subjective. If that works for you, keep doing it. I like this style. You know, nobody trades the same way. If I told you, like, hey, I trade Google and I use a 50-point stop loss, right? You may, go, you may go, man, you're crazy. I could never do that. And that style may not work for you, right? So everything's different. There is no best. There's no, there's no best way to trade. There's no better way to trade. There's what you can actually get yourself to do on a consistent basis. Like, you know, uh, like me and Fausto. Me and Fausto trade differently. But what Fausto does works for Fausto. What I do works for me. What, what you want to do is take pieces from Fausto and pieces from me and kind of mesh them into something that works for you. That's my best advice. All right, so lagging line touching the cloud. So when you got the price action, it's below the cloud here. You can see massive downdraft. When the lagging line comes up to the bottom of the cloud and when the price touches the bottom or the top of the cloud, those are usually good counter trend signals. So keep your eye out for those. Now, here's the signals that I'm not a huge fan of, but I do need to make you aware of them. On this example, if you've got a massive uptrend, because the price action is above this cloud here, and then you see where the red and the green cross, I would never short that. All right, I would say, well, it's going to sell off. It's probably going to go to the top of the cloud or the bottom of the cloud. For me, I would wait and go, oh, now it's below the cloud. All right, now it's below the cloud. Now I've got a cross, Chris, cross. I could reshort that. Chris, cross. I could reshort that. I could do Chris. Where's that? Where did it cross? Uh, Chris and then cross. That's a better way to do it, in my opinion. All right. Uh, do you use, uh, do you trade off of Ichimoku intraday? Yeah, I day trade and swing trade Ichimoku methodology. And if you want, I'll show you, um, they gave you an ex example of Fitbit. Fitbit sold off like crazy today. I'll show you how you could have caught the down move in uh, Fitbit using Ichimoku. So uh, bullish signals. Price above the cloud is bullish. Price in the cloud are bullish if they come from the bullish side. 
The lagging line crossing the cloud is the main signal of trend change. Prices crossing the cloud is an earlier but less reliable warning of trend change. And prices and uh, price and lagging line will often find support at the cloud's edges. Cloud span crossing may be a sign that the trend is changing. Be on the lookout for thick clouds after a run-up, which could mean that the trend is about to change. Now, that's bullish signals. Here's the bearish signals. I'm going to put these up here. I'm going to grab a quick drink. You read those while I take a quick sip here. Uh, TJP, we'll get to that in just a second. All right. Let's move on here. Let's see what we're going to do next here in this PowerPoint presentation here. Uh, you've already talked about the back testing results. We talked about that they are decent, they are good, and they are reliable. Time frame selection. So look, daily is good for 20 to 30 days minimum. Hourly is good for three days minimum. 10 minute signals good for four hours. Five minute signals good for two hours. I do the daily, the hourly, and the 10 minute. If you want to do something lower, you can. I don't do much of that, um, but you can do it. All right. Multiple time frame analysis. I like the daily, the hourly, and the 10 minute time frame. Uh, number one question I get is, well, what's the best stop to use? Now, back testing wise, one that tests really, really good amongst other stuff. Is called the PAR SAR, which stands for parabolic SAR. This should be on your platform. All right. You can also, if you're long, you can use the bottom of the cloud. And if you're short, you can use the top of the cloud. So let's go through uh, and look at some live charts. All right. So I want to go over here. Give me just a second. I'm gonna exit this out. Discard. And this is what Ichimoku looks like on a daily basis. This is the SP. All right. Does everybody see my trade station with the S&P 500 on it? I'm going to roll through some of the major futures markets here, and I'm going to show you some really cool stuff that you can do scan-wise. So this is just included in trade station. It's free. And you can see it, the S&P is in the cloud. It's below the turning and the standard line. When it's like that, I just leave it alone. I just go, you know what, S&P, you're not for me today. You're in the cloud, which you did bounce off the bottom of the cloud, but you'd have to close above the yellow and the purple line in order for me to get long. So for you, my friend, I'm not touching you. Let's take a look at the YM. Where's the YM at? This is the Dow. All right, Dow, same situation. It was above the cloud. It sold off, bounced, sold off, bounced, sold off, bounced. It's below the turning and the standard line. It would have to get back above the cloud before I would think about getting long that, excuse me, on a swing basis. On an intraday basis, it's totally different. I'll rely on a smaller time frame. And now when I'm looking at this stuff, I'll, I'll do it a multi-time frame analysis. Now let's take a look at the NASDAQ. Let's see how the NASDAQ's doing. NASDAQ, same situation. It's in the cloud. I don't have a huge advantage. I want to either buy at the top of the cloud or the bottom of the cloud, and I want it to be going through the yellow and the purple line. At TF, this is the Russell. Nah, here we go. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. So you see where we're below the cloud here? We bounced up into overhead resistance, and we sold back off. That's a solid short signal. This is a layup trade in my opinion. So I like this trade a lot better than I like the Dow, S&P, or the NASDAQ. The Russell is leading the charge lower. I like that. That's a good short. Let's take a look at crude oil. Crude oil. Now, check this out. Crude oil, I'm going to show you all the way back here. Look at this. You see how crude oil initially had a sell signal back here in August? And it sold off and bounced. Sold off. It did cross one time here. There was a long signal. Get long. Boop. And then get short again. And then look at here. Short again here. And then what are we doing right now? So is crude oil bullish or bearish right now? It's definitely bearish. It's below the cloud. It's below the standard line. It's below the turning line. It wants to put in new lows at $35. So if you're going to nibble on crude, Tight stops because it may be going a little bit lower. Let's take a look at gold at GC. This is all live stuff. So gold, we have a little, a little situation here. We're below the cloud. We have cleared the turning line and the standard line. Where's this thing probably going to go? Where's it probably going to go? It's probably going to go to the bottom of the cloud here. 
and it might even go to the top of the cloud before it rolls back over and goes substantially lower, right? So it's pretty easy. Let's take a look at the bonds. I trade a lot of bonds. 30-year bond, unfortunately, it's in the cloud. Therefore, I would leave this one alone. The 10-year note, 10 year note is actually a decent short right here in these areas. I like that. That looks pretty decent. Let's take a look at corn. Anybody trade corn? Look at this. Corn, massive short here, and it's powering lower. Now, let's take a look at Fitbit. Now, Fitbit depends on what you're trying to do with FIT. If you're doing an end-of-the-year strategy, this thing uh, would have been a decent bounce if they wouldn't have had this new lawsuit. So it's been below the cloud, bounced in overhead resistance, and sold off. So here's, if you compare these things, so this is a 10-minute. Let me change this uh, daily 60, 10-minute. There's the 10. On a 10-minute signal, you see this one, two, three bars. If you go on the first signal, the first close, that's your short on Fitbit. How long is a 10-minute signal good for? Does anybody remember? Four hours. I would say it had at least four hours of selling off, right? Let's take a look at a 60-minute. How long is a 60-minute signal good for? A 60-minute sell signal is good for a three-day drop. So there you have it. Now, the cool thing about TradeStation is you can do this stuff, which is really neat. I can come in here and go, you know what, TradeStation, I want you to scan for me anything that is above. I'm going to make this a, a larger time frame. Now, the time frame drop, I can go, I can click this and I can go pop, 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 pop. You see how that happened right there? Uh, new below the cloud, new below the cloud, new below the cloud, new below the cloud. Now, this is a different time frame than that, so it won't match up. Um, but you see how I can do that? New below the cloud, new below the cloud. I got tons of stuff below the cloud that I. This will just automatically scan for me, and then I can look at that. That's pretty cool, right? Now you're sitting there going, man, I don't have TradeStation. TOS has the same type of feature, but if you don't, watch this, S-T-O-C-K-C-H-A-R-T-S. Everybody go really quickly to this website. I don't have any financial interest in any of these companies. Um, we're going to go to stock charts. <coughs> Excuse me. Stockcharts.com. There's your link. We're going to scroll down here to these little blue boxes. See where it says predefined scan results? You're going to click there one time. And then you're going to scroll down to the candlestick patterns to the bottom where it says Ichimoku patterns. Now, this is going to tell you that there's 180 moved above the cloud today and 576 moved below the cloud. What's that tell you first off? What's that tell you? We're probably more bearish than we are bullish. So you're going to hold down the control key, and you're going to click one time there and click one time there. That's going to put you two tabs right up here. See how that happens? This is going to be moved above the cloud. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sort these bad boys um, by volume. All right? We're going to come over here. We're going to click this tab. We're going to sort these bad boys by volume. All right? Now, since we had more below the cloud than above the cloud, let's, let's, let's focus on those. Now, we, want, we don't want to trade stuff that's, pink sheets over the counter and for me let's say oh here's one cisco everybody recognize the name cisco um so let's click right here on cisco we're going to click this chart and then what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and i'm going to go okay simple i'm going to go ichimoku full i'm going to go i don't need anything here and i don't need any of this stuff i'm just making a nice clean chart and then i'm going pink, and then i'm going to update all now you can see cisco as of yesterday, was below the cloud. That's a good short. So now you can get your short list from this. Here's key, right? K-E-Y, and eBay is also on the list. So let's go K-E-Y, K-E-Y, bink, below. That's an eBay, okay, E-B-A-Y, eBay. Ooh, look at there, nice little short. Does that make sense? Easy to follow? So this is stockcharts.com. It will scan for you, moved above the cloud or moved below the cloud. If you don't have good charts, which you should, but if you don't, if you've got sucky charts, you can, um, you can uh, plot them over here. You can also do Netflix, NFLX. Netflix moved above, below the cloud yesterday, and it's selling off again today. So there, if you don't have TradeStation or if you don't have TOS or if you don't have any of the really good platforms out there, you can use stock charts as a backup in order to do that. All right.
Now I'm going to go back over here really quickly. If you'll give me just a few, uh, NFLX, give me a few symbols. I'll look at them really quickly with you. I can't do everybody because there's 132 people in here, um, but I'll do a few. AMZN, Amazon. All right. So who's stronger, Netflix or Amazon right now? Amazon is. It's bouncing off the top of the cloud. So that's a decent long. AAPL, Apple, and Fitbit both sold off today. Uh, they had some comments on the Apple that made Fitbit go a little bit lower too. So in this example here, Apple is a short. When it bounces to the yellow, that is a short. Stop loss would be the purple. Target would be $90. XLE. XLE is just straight up play on crude oil. That's a short with a stop of 63 and a target of 55. NKE, Nike. Nike right now is if it can bounce... Uh, right here and hold, it's a decent long with a stop of 60.97 and a target here of 64.34. Overlay should be Ichimoku or Ichimoku full. I do Ichimoku full. SBUX. Uh, Starbucks. Uh oh, Starbucks is in a little bit of trouble here. It has broken the cloud. One, two, three bars below the cloud and a close would be an official sell signal on Starbucks with a stop of 60. 07 and a target of $55. I S R G Ingersoll and ran. Nice looking long. Look at that thing. That is a long when it sold off to the yellow. It held and it's going higher. Stop would be 530. Target would be about 590. 590. It's a beautiful looking chart right there. It's a beauty. T M U S. T M U S. This is a brand new fresh long. Fresh long as of today, long with a stop of thirty-seven thirty-seven and a target of forty-four dollars. UA Under Armour is a massive short. It has been a short ever since it broke down here below. Bounced up, whack a mole in the head. That's a short with a stop of eighty-five twenty-five and a target of seventy dollars. GL GLD is going to be the same thing as crude oil, or not crude oil, but gold. It's going to be the same thing. Right now, it's a it's a decent little counter trend long with a target of about 104.50, and then it should roll back over. Nuance Communications, uh, Jerry J, you got a you got a symbol there. It help a lot. Uh, AMGN, AMGN is it's at the top of the cloud. It's a decent long. It would have to close above 160 to get me get me interested. Don't understand shorting completely. How do you know where to buy a short? Albert, all a short is is a bet on it going lower. You would cover on support. So if you shorted uh, Amgen here at 160, you would cover it at 150 at support. In VDA, Nvidia, Nvidia is actually a decent long. I like it. It's it's a massive uptrending stock. You see how easy it is to kind of figure out which way these things are going. If it looks nice and pretty, it's easy. If it, it if it looks sideways and Funky looking and ugly, you just leave it alone. So this is a good long with a stop of around 32.13 and a target of 35. NUAN is a decent long, stop of 19, target of 22. All right, I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint. Remember, you can use stock charts in order to do this. You do not have to use charting platform, although I highly recommend if you're going to be a professional trader, you might want to invest in some good tools. All right. I'm going to finish the PowerPoint, and then we'll go back to live charts. All right. So we've looked at some live charts. So pretty easy, right? It makes things easier to look at, and it, it, it's called at a glance because at a glance, you'll immediately know what's going on with the chart, whether it's going up, down, or sideways. So here are some success stories. The course was awesome. I've taken one bond trade, and I've made over $900. Do you think I'm happy? I just entered the bond trade, shorted again where I took profits earlier today after you made me greedy for possible further drops. I'm happy dancing. This is the first time I've had a successful trade during a course. I have the hardest head in the world. You couldn't have made it simpler, Mary. Dude, thanks. You are likely the only reason I have kept at it with trading. And now that I'm profitable, I can't thank you enough. It was really great, and I can't wait to attend the gold trading class Thank you so much for all you do, Greg. Here's one by Ron. The webinar series was a great experience. Very informative and educational and lots of fun. 
But that's no surprise. All of your courses have been great learning opportunities. So I am inviting you to be one of our next success stories. So who is this for? If you're serious about making real money in the markets, if you're looking for a proven system, which Ichimoku is, if you can follow a simple set of rules and directions, and if you know that your success is tied to taking action, then the course will probably be for you. All right. Now, who is this not for? It is not for holy grail seekers. It is not for people that suffer from hopium or for guru surfers. If you follow me, Fausto, and 4,000 other trading gurus online, pick three. Just pick three. And heck, uh, if you pick three of us, we're still going to be going in different directions and different time frames. So that's going to be confusing to you a little bit. But at least pick your top three. And if I'm not one of them, I don't care. Just pick three that you like. Stick with it and steal bits and pieces from those guys or gals and make it your own. If you think you're going to take $5,000 and turn it into a million dollars by May, it's probably not going to happen. Okay? Uh, so just, just be careful. There is no shortcut to long-term success, although you can learn some tricks of the trade that can increase your success over time or decrease your learning curve. There are no shortcuts to long-term success. If you can't make a decision and if you like to make things more complicated for no good reason, this course is definitely not for you and I'm not your guy. Um, three types of people in the world, those that make things happen, those that watch things happen, and those that ask what just happened. Hopefully you're in the top two. Here's a fraction of what you'll learn when you invest in the number one best-selling Ichimoku course in the market. I'm going to give you my seven proven setups, my trading rules and indicator settings. Heads up, I use the default, so there's no, I'm not hiding anything from you. I use the default. 9, 20, 6, 52, and no, they don't change. I'm going to give you my checklist with cheat sheets, with entries and exits for stop losses and targets, and I'm going to show you how to scan the markets with Ichimoku. I, I pretty much already showed you how to do it with TradeStation and with stock charts. We also have videos on there showing you how to do it with TOS, Think or Swim. Okay? I'll show you how to filter out the best trades so that you'll never guess what to do next. And I'll also show you how to avoid head fakes. There are a couple head fakes that you need to know about. If you don't know about them, they could potentially hurt you. You have absolutely zero risk. You have a 100% satisfaction guaranteed. No questions asked. If you don't love the course, I don't want your money. Life is too short. i got to be able to sleep at night. You just go away happy and just know that, hey, you tried it. You gave it a shot. Didn't work for you. Great. Maybe you'll do it something else on down the line. I always over deliver. My goal is to always give you 10 times return on your investment. So here's what you want to do. You want to go to hubertcenters.com forward slash cloudy. You can also call the office. My team is right behind me and will answer the phone when you call unless a ton of you start calling and then it'll be hard for them to answer all the calls and then it happens every time and you'll end up going to voicemail. Here's the link for you. There you go. You can call area code 859-963-3445. The Ichimoku, char Ichimoku Cloud Charting Secrets retails for $197. How to use Ichimoku with candlesticks is included in the class on how to use candlestick patterns with Ichimoku. I'm going to give you four follow-up webinars, value of $97, and then one day of live trading. All right? Um, your special offer for today's webinar price is $97. There is a catch. There's always a catch on a webinar. It's only for the first 50 people. Telephone number is area code 859-963-3445. All right, let's see here. Um, that is the link. I'm going to go to live charts. I usually don't have to sell this thing very hard just because most people either like it or they don't like it. Let me move my, my little screen here and then I'm going to do chart after chart for you real quick. And then, let me see here just a second. Let me format. I'm going to get this thing on here so you can see I'm moving right here. There you go. And then I'll put my chart right underneath it. That'll work just fine right there. There we go. Can everybody see the link? HubertCenters.com forward slash cloudy. Telephone number is area code 859 963 Three, four, four, five. Now, 
Has anybody taken this class before? And if you do, good things or bad things to, to say about it would let people know whether it's any good or if it's any bad. Did you mention another chart? Other chart. Did you mention another chart than stock chart? Stock charts. Stockcharts.com is what I do. There's one. Save one. Yes. Awesome. Interesting. M, uh, Walmart moved above the cloud as well as today. WMT. Walmart. Uh, oh, yeah. Walmart is a decent long. So Walmart would be an aggressive long because it is one day close above the cloud. I would like to see two more, but yes, that would work. Uh, E-Signal's got Ichimoku. Yeah. So there's, there's a few people that's already saying that they have taken it and it's a decent course. They said great, but I'll go decent. Um, but yeah, Walmart would be a good long. I'd add Walmart to your watch list, especially if it stays up there two more days. It's going to be a really, really good long. Yeah, that's a, that's a good trade. So you have me some symbols here, and I'll go through them one by one for the next, I'll say, 10 minutes. I'll stay for 10 minutes with you. DIS. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, yep. DIS is a short. It is a short here. It is a short with a stop of 104 and a target of $90. $90. Yes. Uh, let's see here. SSNI. SSNI would be along here at the cloud. At uh, You should have been a buyer at the top of the cloud there at 1370. And a tight stop of around 1336 and a target of 1550. Just for the fun of it, WTW. Uh, WTW is a decent long. I would like to see it hold this yellow line, which it didn't today, so wait for it tomorrow. If it closes above that, that looks decent with a target of 30. EPAM EP is a long right here at the cloud with a tight stop loss of 73.75 and a target of 79.15. ARG, ARG is, eh, ARG is kind of a weird one. It's, it's, it looks like they've been a, a buyout candidate, so just be careful with that one. Can't really do much with that one. That one's pretty much, if you didn't get it down here, no sense in messing with it up there. Yep. Uh, so you can't do anything with that. SODA, a little air gas. Soda, um, soda, I would, you'd have to wait for it to touch the cloud before you could buy it. So it's a, it's a wait. Fit's a sell, right? Fit was a sell. It sold off today with some some serious news. Now you could have caught it intraday a little bit better if you're looking at it intraday here. You could have caught Fit on an intraday sell off on a 60 minute and or a 10 minute MOS. MOS is a short with a stop of 29.61 and a target of 25 dollars. GoPro GPRO. Uh, GoPro is a short on the bounce here on GoPro. Let it bounce to the bottom of the cloud around 20. Short that and it should drop down below $15. Mm, how do you choose between all of the different setups? Uh, we, so you rank them. What you do is you go through. So if you go through and scan for a lot of this stuff, what I want to do is I want to scan for ones that's one, two, or three days above or below the cloud. Those are trades that are just starting out. So I rank them like that. So on this one, I wouldn't do this one per se, GoPro. What I would do is I would want something that just crossed below the cloud, one to three bars, or just above the cloud, one to three bars. And I would leave some of this stuff that's a little sketchy and not perfect alone is the way I would personally do it myself. But when somebody asks me, I'll give them, I'll give them input, like SNE. All right? SNE for me, I wouldn't do this, but... If it bounces up to 26, it would be a short. For me, I would rather, I, WMT looks like a better trade. WMT is just getting started. That's a decent aggressive long. It would be aggressive one bar above the cloud. Uh, moderate would be two, and conservative would be three bars above the cloud. Yep. UPS, a little ups. Ups is a short, right? So UPS, I'd let it bounce to 96.18, short it there. Stop would be ninety nine twenty eight, and target would be around ninety dollars. I do use volume. I'm a huge fan of volume. I actually have just invested in uh, uh, the company Hawkeye Indicators. Um, I, I'm a huge fan of volume. Yeah, I, you can just you can only teach so much on a webinar, though, especially a one hour webinar. If you try to teach too much, it's too confusing. So you got to break it down into pieces. 
Do you use any momentum indicators? Momentum indicators that I would use would be price and volume. Yeah, price and volume. And you guys should be set because I know Fausto does a great job teaching you guys how to read tape and time and sales and stuff like that. So that's a great way to read momentum. XLF is a short, it's two bars below the cloud. Stop 2369, target 22. Uh, ETE, ETE is, let's see here. Uh, it is, all right, so this is a harder one to read. It is a short because it is below the cloud. It's between the yellow and the purple. So when I when we do when it's between the yellow and the purple, I just leave them alone and let them see who's going to win in that case scenario. When you short, how do you know how far to go out on expiration, Albert? That's that depends on what you're trying to do, my friend. Yeah, Albert, if you've never shorted before, you probably need to get a little bit of training on how to properly do that before you just throw some stuff on. Yeah, yeah. All right, a few more, and then we'll call it a day. All right. A few more symbols here. It is only a one-time fee of $97. It is not a renewing subscription, if you're wondering. I get that question a lot in webinars. It is a one-time fee. Once you've got it, you've got it for good. It teaches you how to use Ichimoku. SPY, SPY is the same thing as um, the ES. Right now, it's in the cloud, so... That one's a little sketchy, so just be careful on the SPY. That's a hurry up and wait situation. ARG went up 48% in three days. R -R -R. Yeah, yeah. ARG, um, yeah, it's um, obviously when it was above here, it was the time to buy. On the first, second, on the third day, I wouldn't touch it with the 10-foot pole. I just wouldn't touch it. It's obviously some, some type of uh, buyout opportunity or something. I don't know what caused that, but first day and second day, third day, ridiculous. Wouldn't touch it. Uh, TSN. TSN. I like this. It's got a nice little doji here. I would buy this at 5201 with a stop of 51 even and a target of about $56. Uh, DAL. DAL here is a decent long. The cloud is supporting it properly. Good long here at 4857. Stop would be around 48 bucks. Target would be 54. R-E-G-N. R-E-G-N is a, an aggressive short. R-E-G-N is one close below the cloud. That would be aggressive. I'd wait for two more bars. And then that would be a short with a target of 460. T-V-I-X. T-V-I-X is... Mm, I don't usually mess with stuff below 10 bucks much. I consider them penny stocks. Uh, that thing there is just a massive short. It does not look like it's going to go, well, it's actually the VIX. And the VIX, it's still saying the VIX is lower, so be careful. It's saying that the B -I -A, the T V I X is lower. It is the, uh, what have we got here? The Ichimoku. Yeah, it's still calling for it lower. Just be careful on that one. That's a weird looking chart. Yep. MCD, little Mickey D's. Mickey D's looks good. Nice little long. Sold off into the turning, bounced off of the standard, closed above the turning again. That'd be a good long at 119 with a target of about 130. WTW. WTW would be a decent long with a target of about 30 if it can close back above that 22 area. Facebook. Facebook is in the cloud, therefore leave it alone until it gets either to the top of the cloud or until it breaks the bottom of the cloud. All right? All right, that's going to do it for me today. Oprah needs to lose some weight. R, R, G. All right, there you go. Um, sounds good. Um, good luck. Hope it helps. Here is your link. And the telephone number is right here. Echo 859-963-3445. Fausto, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. You guys are in good hands. Fausto's a really good trader and a really good guy, so I know he's going to be teaching you some really cool stuff. So good luck. Hope it helps, and I'll see you guys on the next one.